선행으로 서로를 격려해 따스함으로 보듬어가리 주님 우리 안에 함께 하시니 형제 자매의 기쁨과 슬픔 느끼네 내 안에 있는 주님 모습 보네 그분 기뻐하시네 The message comes from Hebrews 11, verse 17 to 40. Hebrews 11, verse 17 to 40. Let's do a response reading. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had received the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, It is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned that God could raise the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau in regard to their future. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of Joseph's sons and worshipped as he leaned on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph, when his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions about his bones. 
By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. By faith he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after the people had marched around them for seven days. By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administer justice and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead, raised to life again. Others were tortured and refused to be released, so that they might gain a better resurrection. Some faced jeers and flogging, while still others were chained and put in prison. They were stoned, they were sawed in two, they were put to death by the sword. They went about in sheepskins and goatskins, destitute, persecuted and mistreated. The, word was, the world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, and in caves and holes in the ground. These were all commended for their faith, yet none of them received what had been promised. Altogether, God had planned something better for us, so that only together with us would they be made perfect. Amen. Now let's all pray for the senior of us who is delivering the message that his lips will be anointed by the Holy Spirit. Pray that he will have the wisdom and the knowledge and the power to preach the word and pray for our own souls so that we can receive this word with faith. Let's pray together. Chamro 하나님 앞에 감사함으로 나가고 우리 하나님 앞에 준비된 심령으로 주님을 바라는 귀한 시간 되게 역사여 주시옵소서 하나님 앞에 나가는 우리 모든 심령을 주께서 기억하여 주시옵소서 하나님이 함께하여 주시옵소서 하나님이 역사여 주시옵소서 하나님 아버지 God our Father 우리에게 명하신 거룩한 성의를 we thank you for blessing this Holy Lord's Day which you gave us. We, we have all come in obedience and we ask for your grace. Anoint your servant's lips. Help him to deliver the message that you want to give them. Help him to speak the word that you want them to hear. In Jesus' name, Amen. Be ready. Let's all read the sermon outline together. Let's begin. God is he who rewards. He gave faith to the world and commanded man to live by this faith, which is the true righteousness of God. While religious perfection can be achieved without faith and through moral cultivation alone, the righteousness of God is the truth which cannot be attained apart from faith. Consider the faith of Abraham, consider the faith of Isaac, consider the faith of Jacob. God said he is their God. Consider Moses. He chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin and esteemed suffering disgrace for the sake of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. 
People cannot see this glory because they fail to demonstrate their faith before God. The Holy Spirit comes only to help those who are ready. What have you offered to God in faith? God is disappointed, for you do not even heed His words. What have you done in faith? Your love for the world is greater, but you reject the matters of the kingdom of God. How will you live by faith? Should we not sacrifice even our lives first for His kingdom and His righteousness to be ready to receive His blessings? Do not deceive God. Do not worry about what to eat or drink or wear, but seek first His kingdom and His righteousness. Amen. God is He who rewards. A reward and grace are different from each other. A reward is something that you work for. You have to work and depending on how, how well you do, you will receive a reward. But grace is given without any works or merits. It's a gift. God has given us infinite grace, but He is also the one who rewards. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Jesus Christ is the one who pleased God. The one without faith cannot please God together with Jesus Christ. So the one who comes before God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. So many people today zealously attend church and they, are, they try to perfect themselves morally and ethically trying to cultivate themselves. This is a common point in all religions. This is, a, this is a similarity between all religions. However, this does not make a person righteous. In this world, people may acknowledge them as righteous. Just say that a person is drowning in the water. Another person sees this person drowning, jumps into the water, saves this person but he himself dies and people might say wow he's a righteous person he's such a good person and they commemorate him and his work this is because a man has done something good they might call this righteous but this is not what God is seeking this is all based on the standards of this world. God does not call that righteousness, though. Man's merits or works might be acknowledged by men. However, God does not take a person into eternal life or save them because of that. God does not call that the qualification to be saved. That's why the Bible already declared there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one holy, not even one. In all the history of mankind, there is not one person who is righteous. The Bible has declared this. So there is no way for man to be renewed in any way. That's why God sent the only one who is righteous, and that is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came to the earth, and He took our place. So that by the merits of Jesus Christ, we receive salvation. 
When we come before God and pray, we don't say, Oh Lord, I didn't sin. The Pharisees did, however. They say, Oh God, I didn't sin. I didn't do anything evil. I didn't steal from anyone. I didn't commit murder. Even though we might say the same as, the, as them, we cannot be deemed righteous by God because God has announced that there is no one righteous in this world. There is not one man who is righteous with their own righteousness. Even if they might have saved 10 people and he himself lost his life trying to save them, that's not going to lead this person to salvation. Man's own righteousness, man's own merits and work cannot lead him to salvation. That's why we come before God and we pray. We don't say, God, I didn't sin for the past week. God, I kept a pure heart holy. God is not going to praise us for saying that because that's not what God is seeking from us. We come before God and anything that we can say, the only thing we can say is, God, I'm a sinner. That's why Apostle Paul also said, there is nothing else that I can boast of except for the message of the cross, except for the merits of Jesus Christ who died for me. I have nothing else to boast about. That's why we come before the Lord and we say, Lord, I am a sinner. I am a sinner. I have sinned. During the past week, I was living in sin. We have to deny ourselves completely. We have to lay ourselves bare before God and repent. How can I, a sinner, live? So it is by the Lord's meritorious deeds. It is by His works that I am saved. It is by the Lord's works that I have come before God. It is by His works that's righteousness the righteousness of God the works of God it is not with man's righteousness but it is with God's righteousness that we have become righteous so by the blood of Jesus we are clothed and we are empowered by His works. It is not through our own labor or works that we we are made righteous, but it is by grace. It is by God's grace that we are justified, that we are called righteous. Please stay awake. Too many people today, people throughout the country, they go on the Lord's Day and but I don't know what they are listening to. It is not my own righteousness that we boast of. It's not saying, it's not about saying, oh, I didn't sin in the past week. How fortunate. Now I can come and come before God confidently. No, we're not here to boast of our righteousness. We are a sinner who cannot lift our heads before God. However, it is by the Lord's works, it is by His meritorious deeds that I've come before God. So God. Be gracious and accept me. It is by His grace that we are made righteous. Baptism, what does that mean? By receiving baptism, by being baptism, we have been empowered by the uh, works of Jesus Christ. That It's an experience, it's a confession that we have. We can't see grace, but it's not something that only touches our hearts. The grace we received by, by being baptized, we testify that we have been justified by the Lord's grace. We are confessing that through baptism. So we have been baptized. I am not a righteous man, but it's by Christ's works that I have been made righteous. And this was all given to me by God's grace. That's why I've been baptized. I declare that I have been made righteous through baptism. That they are, so I boast that I'm a Baptist. But people don't know how to boast that they are Baptist. They don't have that pride as a Baptist. A Baptist cannot be denied by any angels in heaven. Nobody can hinder their way to heaven. We have been baptized. 
There is a reward that God is going to give. That reward we obtain with by our works, by obeying what God commands us to do, and with our own efforts, we receive a reward from God. Christian faith. There is something very crucial about Christian faith, and that is God's reward. If you don't have any expectation or if you don't look forward to a God's reward, then you are not a Christian. You're just a religious person. You're clearly just a religious person. We have to believe that God is the one who rewards. What is a blessing? We do not receive God's blessing by grace. We do not receive God's blessing as grace. It's blessing and grace. You have to receive grace as well as blessing. Grace comes through the works of Jesus Christ. But God's blessings, I have to obey the word of God in order to receive. It's a reward that I receive from God. That's what God's blessing is. People ask for blessings, they say, God bless me, but pay attention to what you are saying. It's, can you actually say, Lord, reward me? Because they mean the same thing. Because a blessing of God is referring to God's reward. The reward that God gives is a blessing. But people think about blessing as receiving something without doing the works that God commanded us. They are asking for God's reward without doing anything that God has commanded. From young children to adults, to everyone in this world, is that, is that possible? Is that, is that even comprehensible? The Bible says we are all running a race in a marathon. Everybody, hundreds of people start together at the same time. They run with all their heart, all their energy. In the beginning, there were one group, but the group separates. There, are, there is a distance between each runner. And towards the end of the race, they're all scattered throughout the course. Now, the leading team, maybe about 20 people, 20 runners, but then as they near, near the end, those runners at the front give all their effort and only one person can get through the finishing line. In the same way, we are all running a race. And there is only one who can receive a reward out of those many. Only one. So many people, a lot of people might say, oh, this kid is talented, this kid, there's hope for this kid. Now, if you look at those children, can they really become national representatives in their field? Do they really, if they have a skill, if they have a talent, are they able to dedicate themselves, devote themselves to become a representative of their school or work harder and represent the area or work even harder and represent their district, work even harder and become a representative of the country? and then even go into the Olympics. Now, those that go to the Olympics and actually win a medal, are not the same as someone who comes first in his own class at school. Even though everybody has talents and skills, it's all about how much you train yourself, how much effort you put in. It demands such a huge sacrifice. This applies to us as well. Even I, t I tell my son and my grandchildren, even a few days ago I said to them, 
God does not use us because we ha we are anything. We need to be like those national representatives. Some people say, I've studied Berea, I know Berea, but they are not able to succeed their ministry because they're like students that can represent their class, but they can't be a representative of their district, or they can't represent the state, or they can't represent their their country. They can't. can't they can't be. A, that's why they can't succeed their ministry. You will receive a reward when you attain that level. And I said to my grandchildren, we have to work that hard. We have to be like those national or. It, athletes, international athletes. There are some players that um, that are very well known. I know Kim Yona, the, the skater, figure skater. And Lee Sun Hwa and Son Yeon Jae. Since they were little girls, they started. And I once heard their story that they, on average, train nine hours a day. They have to do that every single day. If one day they are so worn and tired and they take a rest, then they lose a second in their record. And for them to regain that one second, for them to actually go back to their original level and state, it requires much more training in order to become a world athlete and to represent their country. They train nine hours a day. That's why in the book of First Timothy it says physical discipline, physical training is beneficial. Now how much more would it be if you practice godly discipline? Do you really dedicate nine hours a day for you to receive a reward? Can you pray that much? Are you really obeying God to that degree? If you don't, God will not use you. Even if you are a grandson of a pastor, it doesn't mean that you'll be used by God. And it's all about how much effort you put in. I tell my grandchildren, I, they know that I spend all night and writing or reading books. Whenever they come to my room, they know that I'm studying or writing or reading. And I tell them, you need to work like your grandfather did in order to become like those world athletes. That's how hard you have to work. But today, what are, what are people like today? In the Bible it says, though we receive baptism and we have tasted the good words of God and take upon the Holy Spirit and tasted the powers of the coming age, we have tasted the gifts of God. If we fall away, there is, there is no way for them to be renewed to repentance. If they want to repent, then they will have to bring down Jesus Christ and crucify Him again. It will only be possible if you are born, if you are born again and start all over, but that's impossible. So, whatever is left, whatever is left in you, just like the soil that absorbs the rain that comes down seasonally, if you produce the f if you produce fruit, then you will be blessed. But otherwise, you'll be cursed and burned. It's in Hebrews chapter six, verse one to eight. When we say, I oh, received the Holy Spirit, people just joining together saying, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. And they did take part in the Holy Spirit. They did hear the Word of God. They did taste the powers of the coming age. They've experienced God's miraculous signs. They've even tasted the gifts of, of God. The Bible says the Holy Spirit came and the people began speaking in tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. They began speaking in tongues, but they stopped afterwards. Some people come to me sick. And I say, can you speak in tongue? Then speak in tongue, speak in tongue. Pray and speak in tongue. And they would just mumble. And I said, speak in tongue louder. 
In the beginning, they received the gift of tongues and they started speaking in tongues, but it stopped, it ceased there. It's like a plant that, that came out as sprouts, but it stopped, or the branch came out, but it withered. It cannot be renewed again. Once a branch withers that year, it cannot be revived ever again. Are you leading your faith life as the world athletes do and they train themselves? Are you giving all your heart, all your will, all your mind, all your soul? Are you loving God? If you do love God, you will keep His commands. If you love God, then you will give all your life. But do you do that? God commands His blessing upon us. If we accept Christ, we know how to keep the Lord's Day. Even keeping the Lord's Day is a blessing that God commanded us. That's why in the scriptures it says, those who love the Lord's Day will be remembered by God always. You need, if you want to draw God's attention, then you must long for the holy day. If you long for the holy day, then God will continuously think about you. He will remember you. However, people are fervent and zealous for a while to keep the Lord's day, but when they're busy with the world, and we're all, if, if their business in the world goes well, then they just ignore and neglect the Lord's day, which is why they lose, they, they cannot draw God's attention. God will lose, God will just forsake His interest in you. You have, nothing, you have done nothing before God, you cannot even draw God's attention. Can you be acknowledged as one of those world athletes? Those world athletes might be skilled and talented from their, from a young age, but they have to really train hard. They have to de sacrifice so much more than other people to become world athletes. And only then will they be acknowledged by, the by their country to represent their country. That's why you have competitions within your area, in your district, state, and then country. And then you might be able to represent your country on a world level, on a world stage. Is, is your faith like that right now? Is your faith at that level? When the Lord called me and I began His work, I was persecuted from then on. I was called heresy, a medium, a shaman, all sorts of names I was called. I was slandered in such a way that it's so hard to handle, but still I didn't still fall away from this path. Those people said that casting out demons is heresy. So I said, I'm, I'm leaving this denomination, th their assembly, and I left because they didn't like me. Even in such, such suffering and persecution, I just followed this path. Other people didn't want to do this, but I still tried hard and worked harder and harder when others refused to. And in doing so, I didn't just want to be a representative of my area, of my district or the country early. I wanted to take on the world and do what I was entrusted to do. At that time, I wasn't even schooled. I didn't have any knowledge. I was lacking so much, but God educated me. God let me go to uh, university and the theological seminary as I needed it or even study abroad. I didn't have any anything that would allow me to go over abroad and study. I actually received a student visa to study abroad. I st and I actually was actually invited to come abroad and study. Now, how was that even possible for someone like me? I endeavored to work for God according to His will, and He had provided what I needed. And when I was uh, actually establishing our seminary, there were a lot of people who were trying to also uh, uh, build a seminary. 
그 생기는 법이 생겼는데 그때 다른 학교들 네 다섯 개 There were about four or five other seminaries and colleges that applied at the same time as us, but I heard that they got rejected. 그들은 박사를 받았어요. 그렇지만 그들은 어 정식 박사 아니고 those people didn't just receive a doctorate. They didn't receive a doctorate according to the right process. They received it as an honorary doctorate uh, while they were on travel abroad. But for me, I studied abroad with a proper student visa and received my doctorate, and that's what that's why I was accepted in order to build the seminary. So God prepared all of this in advance. He allowed me. He opened the way for me to prepare. Be prepared in this way. So this one church, our church, has all the functions as a Christian church. We have a seminary of our own. We have our own church building. We have our own uh, press. We have our own bookstore. We, ha we have all the functions that we need as a church because we tried. We worked hard. Though I am so old and I'm waiting for the day to leave, I can continue working. When we try to do what God has given us, what God, what God has commissioned, we can do it. Who is Abraham? Abraham had his own homeland. He had his own land. But God said, leave your homeland, leave your father's house, leave your relatives. He was called to be a stranger, a lonesome range stranger. And Hebrew, a Hebrew means a stranger or an alien. It means to have crossed the river or it means to have passed through our street. It means a stranger. That's why Abraham called himself a Hebrew all his life. He was a stranger. What did it say about him? When he was when he was in his own homeland, when he had his own piece of land, God didn't say you are a source of blessing. God said when he was a stranger, when he had nothing, God said you must now obey my words and since you do so you will be a source of blessing. With all your might, with all your strength, obey what God commands you and be blessed. Be rooted in blessings, be a source of blessing so that your descendants will be as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand of the seashore may be blessed. Your, the members of your household and anyone who blesses you will be blessed. If anyone curses you, they will perish. And truly, Jesus Christ came through to Abraham's household. So if anyone slanders Jesus Christ, he'll be cursed and go to hell. But whoever receives Christ will be blessed. Just as God promised Abraham, if anyone blesses you, they will be blessed. If they curse you, they will be cursed because you are a source of blessing. So from then on, Abraham endeavored to keep this. God commanded him. Offer a sacrifice your son Isaac whom you received at 100 years of age. Offer him as, as a sacrifice on Mount Moriah. And he obeyed accordingly. What, what about Isaac? Isaac just obeyed and gave tithes. Exactly. Jacob also gave tithes. He was a stranger. They were all strangers. They were all aliens. Jacob cried out to God at Peniel and received God's blessing. When he was a stranger in Egypt, he also blessed his 12 sons and he told them, you must serve God. Your God is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He's the God of your forefathers. They held on to this promise to, so that they will keep the name Israel, so that they will be pleasing to God. Then 450 years later, they came out of Egypt. They didn't have anything at that time. They were just strangers and aliens. They were just moving about. They couldn't settle anywhere. However, God's blessing did settle in them. God's blessing was rooted in them. They received God's commandments. They didn't reject it. So what did it what did God say? I am not the God of everyone. He said the God who blesses is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He said I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and I will be their God. Who is God interested in? Who is God going to bless? Is it Abraham, Isaac? It's it's the one who truly obeys God like Abraham, Isaac and Jacob did. It is the one who obeys God's commands with all their life. When you pray, do you pray like Jacob until his until your your bones get disjointed? 
Are we, are we leading our faith life like a runner, like a world athlete? Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone wants to follow me, he must deny himself, overcome everything. He must deny everything, deny himself and follow me. Otherwise, he's not worthy of me. Only those who deny themselves and follow me are worthy of me. And when he sent out his disciples, he said, go to any family, bless them. Bless them. See if they are worthy of blessing. If they receive you, then that blessing will come upon them. If they reject you, if they reject you then you must leave that home and shake the dust off your feet. For this household, when, when Sodom and Gomorrah is punished, it'll be easier for Sodom and Gomorrah to be to than, than for that household on that day. Sodom and Gomorrah perished because of their wealth and pleasures, but whoever rejects God's God, the gospel will be will perish in hell forever. So it's worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah just perished as a physical city, but if you reject the gospel, then it is your soul that will perish. People's, people complain, why doesn't God bless me? You, but you, well, you are not doing what you are not doing what God commanded. You are not doing your duty because a blessing is a reward. Let's all say together, God, reward me. Let's all say, Lord, say it louder, Lord, reward me. But are you worthy to be rewarded by God? Without works, without labor, without your hard work, without having done anything, you cannot be rewarded. You have to do what He commanded in order to receive a reward and His and and His praise. That's the blessing. Blessing is not grace. Reward is not grace. Even the people who perish in this world, those who, are, who deserve to be rewarded, they will be given their reward. Obviously, salvation and rewards are separate. But why can't people be rewarded? Why wouldn't people be rewarded? Is your family worthy to be rewarded by God? Is your is your child, are your children worthy to be rewarded by God? When I established our theological seminary, I did so, so that our children, our descendants may become, and our families may become a source of blessing that God can use. And I suggested that, uh, you, uh, suggested people to start a, a scholarship system for their children. We had a scholarship system and in order to support our later generations. So, if you have paid that scholarship and your children enter the seminary, they will be taught for free. They don't have to pay. They can, they can, they can learn on that scholarship. And we made that pledge, we made that promise, and a few people did that in the beginning. But some people have actually paid for the scholarship, but now they have withered away. They are not making their children become servants of God to be used by God. In the Bible, we can see how the Israelites were cursed. Later, they returned to God and they repented and they tried to examine what their problem was. The scholars, the, uh, the experts of the law studied the history and tried to find the reason. And they, they realized, we have sinned against God in terms of the first fruits. What are the first fruits? Everything in the Old Testament is a, a parable, a symbol. Your crops are not the only first fruits. Your children has to be the first fruits to God, but you have sinned against God in con concerning the first fruits. It says in the book of Nehemiah that you have to, you should not take away the first fruits from God. This is the way for us to live. We shouldn't, we cannot disappoint God. Your children might be smart and clever, but are you trying to make them servants of God? Only when their children are not, are seem dumb and they don't seem to be so bright, they say, oh, can you use him as a servant of God? What is God a rubbish bin? Huh? 
Even your heart should be noticed by God. It should be beautiful in God's eyes. Whatever you set in your heart should be beautiful in God's eyes. My son, my grandsons, I tell them all the time, we need to become like world athletes. We have to make endless efforts. We have to give our life and do what God commanded. Even if the world persecutes us, don't be ashamed. Give all your might, all your strength. In the Old Testament time, they had uh, prophet, the schools for prophets, and there were dozens of students. Elisha was also a student in that prophet school, and he was actually ridiculed as being bold, but those that ridiculed him was actually devoured by animals and died. He was just a student at a prophet's school, but he really longed for the inspiration that Elijah had received. And so God used him, and he was called a man of God. Elijah was called a man of God. Elisha was also called a man of God. Are you truly a man of God? Are your children men of God? Is there anyone who is a man of God in your family? Are you prepared so that your children will be born as a man of God? Then how can you ask for God's blessings? You take God so lightly. How can you even ask for God's reward? At least you should be making more sacrifices than others and have the desire to receive God's reward. Without any of that, how can you even expect to be rewarded? Consider Moses. Look at Moses. What did it say? He chose rather to endure ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin. And he considered bearing suffering of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking to the reward. How much suffering and ordeal did Moses go through? But however, for the first forty years, he could he grew up as as a successor of Pharaoh, and he could have become Pharaoh. But he gave that up. He gave that up. He gave up the riches of Egypt. And I've been to the uh, museums in Egypt, and you cannot imagine how much there are there are so many articles of gold all those riches in Egypt he forsook he chose to suffer for the sake of Christ greater riches uh, for he considered this greater riches and the treasures of Egypt he considered this a greater riches people don't work today and they say God bless me God bless me God, give me money, money, money. That's all that they ask for. They should be someone that God wants to give the, His blessings to. If God entrusts you with material wealth, He, he should want to do that so that He can work through you. More than any treasures in this world, do you regard the suffering? Do you regard suffering for God as greater riches than anything in this world? Jesus said, "When I was a stranger, you took care of me." Jesus had no place to go. And he didn't have any place to entrust his blessing, and he was suffering. Did you receive him at that time? Right now. We have BITS, Bureau International Theological Seminary. And it's still being persecuted. That's why a lot of people cannot come to study. And those people who studied cannot go out and, and work powerfully because they are being persecuted. So they are not able to put into practice the blessing that God gave them. So does God use them since the 80s? So many people have been leaving the church and they are planning their own church, but has any of those churches actually been standing properly? 
If it's been 30 years, they should have become a, grown into a large church, but has any one of them remained? They were just full of the desires and greed of men, and they acted like that, but it didn't yield anything. Even through all these hardships and sufferings, we are continuously going. Some people who left our church, they want to come back. And they want me to hold on to them. They want me to tell them to come. I will not do that twice. I, will not, I did not tell them to come back. We must never deceive God, everyone. God, when God desires to use your family, when He knocks on the door, I'm knocking on the door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will go in and he, I will you I will eat with you and you will eat with me. What are you going to do, Mary, the mother of Jesus? What was she? What what, what message came to her? You will conceive and give birth to Christ. Mary said, I am just I am just a servant. I am a virgin. I, how can this be? When the word of God comes and his power clothes you, nothing will be impossible. Lord, since I am your servant, let your word be done. Let your word be fulfilled in me. If at that time a virgin gave birth to a child, she definitely she would have been killed. She would have been put to death. So she risked her life. Because the Lord says, I want to use you. The Lord is saying, I want to use your family. He says, I want to use your children. But people just ignore these first fruits that they have to offer to God. And anything that seems worthless they want to give to God. Now, did the Bible ever teach us to do that? We have to let God use us. God, use me. God, any one of my sons, if you want, use him. Any one of my children, use them. Please use them, God. I'm not telling people to study theology or go to the seminary to become pastors necessarily. In the beginning when I started uh, preaching the gospel, even people who only graduated from elementary school became ministers and pastors. Because this world is full of knowledge, everybody has to graduate from universities and colleges in order to graduate from the seminary because you will fall behind otherwise. That's why... I I established BITS where you can study the postgraduate courses, where you can get a master's degree or doctorate degree, because this world is so advanced in knowledge. And even if you are not going to be a pastor, even if you don't become a pastor later on, prepare yourselves. The Bible says, whether in season or out of season, be ready. Always give your might, always prepare yourself, always be ready. You don't know when the Lord will call and use you. Our, our, the, the minister, you know, one of the ministers in parliament in our country, he was actually a lay minister in the Baptist Union in our country, and he was actually he was actually planning to become a pastor but the country called him the country needed him and he became he was used by the country so we don't know when or how you'll be used when God needed Moses he called for Moses and he said Moses Moses take off your sandals you were working you were walking on your own path but now take off your sandals because I'm going to send you to Egypt he was trembling how can I go before Pharaoh but God sent him 
We have to be ready. Our families have to be ready. Only then can we be blessed, can we be used by God. Look at yourself. You say, God bless me, God bless me. Blessing equals reward. So if you say, God reward me, what can you be rewarded for? Are you, are you ready? Are you worthy if God calls you right now? Some people, they seem to have, be outstanding and they seem to be talented and so I thought I, I, they can work. But I could see that they, have no, they, could, they had no faith. They were useless. They were only a burden to me. It's sad. In God's eyes, if, even if God wants to use him or that family, they are not ready. What would you do then? What will you do? You have to look at yourself as if you are seeing yourself with the eyes of God. Do you think your family is worthy to be used? Do you think that your family deserves to be used? Do you think your family is worthy to receive God's blessing and be a source of blessing? They say that people live up to 100 years of age. There are many young people and there's only going to be old people left. It's not only for the young people to do God's work, those who are experienced, who have wisdom and knowledge, who are ready, who are prepared, and who have prepared themselves, even in society, they will be used by God in the coming times. So prepare yourself. Ordained deacons go and take the leadership, spiritual leadership course as well. If you go, if you are going to be elders in our church, then you need to become a spiritual leaders. There is no need for you to know anything like technology in the church. What you need to know is the picture of God's will. So go and learn the study the course, but a lot of people refuse to. There are a lot of ways that you can take the course. There are a lot of ways. When you have the time, or if you don't, know, if you don't have the time, do it. Right now is the time because you don't know when God will call you. Prepare yourself. That's why in today's passage it says, "These people the world could not handle." I went up to Mount uh, Kwanak San a mountain to pray, and there was a, a, a tomb, and there was a tombstone in front of it. And it was actually a, a professor of the seminary where I studied, and he said, The man whom the world could not handle. That's what he said on the tombstone, a person that the world could not handle. No matter what the world says, going the way you have to go. Even if the world tempts and deceives, being able to resist and go your way, going your way. Let us be worthy to be used by God. Let us be the families worthy to be used by God. We don't know when God will call us or our family, so that if you have a child, I will raise this child, I will offer this child to God so that they will be used by God, like Isaac. You don't know when God will say, offer him to, to me. We have to prepare our first fruits because we don't know when he will demand that from us. Young people as well, get married quickly and have children. I will raise this child like the servant of God, like Pastor Kim. You need to have that heart to be ready, but people are scared that they might have a child. If you look at everything that people do, they are against the will of God. Please stand, everyone. Reflect on yourself, examine yourselves. Please go home and read the pastor's column. Please read the pastor's column again. And please register, enroll in BITS and study. Really save the time. There was not a time where I stopped working just to study. I was studying at the same time as working. It's really unimaginable how I managed to 
I went to evening classes and while I was working, I don't know how I did, but I prepared myself in that way and God used me. God wants to entrust you with something. He wants to entrust you with His blessings. He wants to reward you. But are you worthy to receive it? Hold your fist tightly and say, oh my, Be ready, O oh my soul. Be ready, O oh my soul. So that your families are ready. Let's all say it together. Be ready, O oh my soul. Be ready, O oh my soul. Be ready, O oh my soul. Love God, O oh my soul. If you really love God, then you would, would you only give your life? You would give everything to God. You would be able to offer everything to God. I love God. Love God, O oh my soul. 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 Be the man, be the family that is used by God. Let God's attention be upon your family. Let's all pray together. Pray earnestly. I'm 그리스도의 부탁하신 일들을 위하여 일하는 것을 정말 세상의 모든 보아보다도 더큰 재물로 여길 수 있는 진정 믿음의 실제리 일도록 하나님 우리 역사시고 도와 주시옵소서 우리 모두 교회가 하나가 되어서 정말 주님이 부탁하신 일들을 훌륭하게 이룰 수 있는 진정한 신앙이 되어 도와주시고 세상에 자기의 마음 빼앗기지 않는 정말 성령이 인도하시는 우리의 참된 천국을 향하는 우리의 믿음이도록 역사시고 상을 준비하는 우리 삶이도록 역사해 주시옵소서. God our Father, you saved us and you promised us a reward and you commanded us to fulfill the works of your kingdom. Help us to stop following the desires of our flesh or the desires of this world as we did in the past, but have love for the kingdom of God and work for the kingdom of God. Let us all be filled with the love of God. Help us to have such faith, Lord. Let us not lose the opportunity of following the way to eternal life, but truly work for the glory of God. Help us to be steadfast in our faith and be made one, so that we may all love God truly and bear fruits. And let us let our church unify and continuously build up our church in Jesus name amen